Hello and welcome to this lecture about general principles of mind design. This lecture is part of the course Mind Design and my name is Onan and my name is Sudhir Mindu. I am a PhD student at Lulio University of Technology, Sweden. This lecture summarizes general principles regarding designing a mind as a system, including the model of the mind itself. Mind design is a complex and long process that has many interrelated tasks. In the last few decades, there has been a lot of advancements in mind design techniques. As practical mind design techniques were developed, the focus was on three groups of problems principally. The first concern was to specify the most appropriate investment schemes to develop economically useful mineral deposits. And once it is specified, then program the associated design and investment work. The second concern was to optimize the basic design parameters for new and reconstructed mines to obtain maximum profitability from the given investment scheme. And the third concern was to execute the technical design necessary to implement the investment project. These tasks could not be implemented without the basic understanding of the theory of mind design. One of the main tasks in the theory of mind design is to analyze the feasibility of different design methods so that the choice of most suitable ones can be justified and to determine their best application. To evaluate these different design methods, some sort of modeling techniques are used. These modeling techniques can be graphical modeling, physical modeling, or mathematical modeling, depending upon their practical use. Graphical modeling is the most widely used, which involves design by drawing. It can be some manually drawn design, or it can be some computer-aided design as well. Graphical models can include sketches, technical drawings, architectural drawings, and diagrams. Physical modeling involves design by developing physical replica of the structure. Their main advantage is that they provide a clear and objective view of the proposed design. Physical models can be either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Finally, mathematical modeling is designed by developing mathematical equations for simulation and optimization of design models. It is being more and more frequently applied as it can simulate the true situation with considerable accuracy. Modern engineering has to deal with increasing complexity and scale of problems confronting the designer. Therefore, researchers have attempted to determine a design methodology which could provide the basis for effective development of optimum design solution. This approach comes from systems engineering. This has resulted from the fact that it is necessary to design not only the technical facility itself in all its complexity, but also to define a whole group of material and organizational conditions which govern its effective operation. Therefore, we consider the mind as a system that has a certain complex whole understanding with a whole set of external conditions with, without which it could not exist. A system is a set of component elements or subsystems which have their own defined objectives and scope. When the input and output elements of the subsystems are determined in the context of ultimate objective of the whole system, each subsystem may be considered independently in the design process. However, their interdependence and mutual feedback should be kept in mind. The system's approach to design problem has three basic characteristic features that include a complex solution of the system is sought, the design approach is interdisciplinary, and the modeling methods are applied, mainly mathematical modeling, to obtain optimum solutions. 
a complex analysis of the whole system is necessary if its optimum size and structure are to be determined advances in design techniques particularly calculation and optimization method facilitate such analysis a reliable complex analysis for optimization of the whole system is usually very difficult therefore individual subsystems are analyzed successively and partial optimize obtained however there some need not essentially be the optimum for the whole system due to the interdependence and feedback existing between subsystems an optimum overall conception may be developed by determining the input and output characteristics as well as the size and structure of the whole system and of the individual subsystems the scale of the investment involved in the construction of a new mine the variety of facilities the techn the technological processes involved and the mutual relationship linking these processes or elements justify treating the mine as a system between the individual elements of the production in a mine there are exact relationships and mutual feedback therefore correct selection and coordinated operation of all these subsystems in a mine has a major influence on the production and cost effectiveness of the system in the case of a mine natural deposit conditions are also very important these conditions are not constant but vary both in time and space and therefore these conditions add significantly to the difficulties encountered in optimizing the size and structure of the mine this figure here shows the transformation of input elements into output elements for a mine system the deposit of useful mineral represents the basic input element and to change this static system into a dynamic state we need additional input elements as indicated here and these are also necessary the the production taking place in the systems transforms these input elements into output element of which this saleable commodity which is uh, for example coal here is the main product and the remaining are either waste or by products the enormous capital investment expenditure for the development of a mine means that the decisions regarding the size and the model of the mine are of paramount importance and will have far reaching consequences the term mine model means the special location and interconnection of the basic mine component for example shafts drifts cross cuts extraction faces development workings pit bottoms pit limits processing plants haulage roads stores workshops and auxiliary facility located on the surface or underground there can be many other components or elements of the mine depending upon whether it is a surface mine or an underground mine the mine model can be different for different deposits based on the geometry and depth of the deposit the ultimate choice of the mine model is the most important step in finalizing the overall conception of the mine design and in establishing the technical as well as economic principles the elements linked directly with the production in a mine are the most important generally these elements form a series system and therefore their production capacities should be the same the most straightforward technological system would be the one in which all the elements of the technological process have the same hourly production capacity and the same synchronized working time so that the problem in one of the sector does not cause some problem in the other sector which is forming this series system it should be synchronized they should have same early production capacity 
Extraction areas must be protected against the effects of stoppages in the main haulage system, particularly when there is high production from the mine, because even a short break in the haulage system results in big production losses, which are virtually impossible to recoup in normal working hours. Mine ventilation and mine drainage are also basic elements of the production process, independent of the others. To establish the complex flow diagram of the mine production and all basic sectors and auxiliary sectors must be taken into account. The following conditions must be fulfilled. There must be adequate production capacity of all production sectors. There must be safe operation and safe working conditions for personnel. There must be conformity of design with all the relevant rules and regulations. There must be reliable operation with minimum breakdowns, which includes selection of suitable roof support, simple ventilation layouts, wear resistant and reliable heavy duty machines and equipment. There must be minimum labor demand. There must be maximum concentration of production. There must be maximum exploitation of the deposit. There must be flexible design that allows for possible adaptation of individual sectors or, or the whole system to meet any post changes of production capacity within certain limits. And there must be minimum investment expenditure and production costs. Mine infrastructure includes all the basic external installations and buildings necessary for proper operation of the mine. The infrastructure has a considerable influence on the location of the main mine surface. Maximum use should be made of the existing infrastructure facilities and installations in the region where the mine is to be constructed. In particular, the possibility of linking the mine with the existing rail and road networks, drying sufficient supplies of drinking and industrial water, and of electrical power. Linking up with and making use of existing infrastructure is usually easier when the mine is constructed in a region where mining development has already taken place. However, if the mine construction involves the development of a new mining region, must much of the infrastructure will have to be created. Access roads to the building site, electrical power network and installations, as well as basic telecommunication facilities have to be present prior to mine construction. In the world of today, the problems of environmental protection have become more and more acute. When considering the principles of mine design and related infrastructure, the protection of natural environment must be treated as a matter of prime importance. It includes preservation of clean air, protection of the surroundings against noise, vibration, and accumulation of mine waste, minimum dust generation, protection of the soil and groundwater against the adverse effects of mining operations and prevention of pollution of surface water by salty or toxic underground waters. As already said, the individual elements of the production in the mine are mutually interdependent. Hence, the correct choice and coordination of all these elements has a major influence on the economy of the system. The operation and coordination of the elements of production is closely dependent on the natural conditions of the deposits, which vary both in time and space. This leads to considerable difficulties in optimization of the system, that is, the mine in this case. To establish optimum size and structure of the mine, it is necessary to make a complex analysis of the whole system. Advances in mathematical optimization methods and the introduction of computer techniques for engineering calculations make optimization feasible, although complicated. 
when seeking optimum solutions the designer has the choice of using the heuristic method to find some immediate solution to the problem this does not produce an exact solution to the problem but it is useful in first stage when design concepts are sought it eliminates the blind search or the laborious analysis of all the variants it uses the previous experiences or techniques which are already used for similar situations simplifications are often made as it is difficult to model some factors however smaller the number of simplifications in modeling the closer is the model to simulate the reality although it will make the model more complex the mind design process comprises three basic stages the conceptual stage the preliminary stage and the final stage optimization is imposed in each stage of the design but the number of problems to be optimized varies for this reason different degrees of accuracy of the system model are required in different stages the best results can be achieved by using the most accurate model of the investment project as a whole not only not by only looking at the subsystems by incorporating further knowledge of the technical and economic relations during the investment process for a new mine as well as during the extraction of the deposit further improvements can be made in the design thank you for listening to this lecture about the general principles of mine design hope it helped you to clarify the concepts discussed in the lecture have a nice nice time thank you